Hello and welcome to Fun Bikes TV. My name is James and today we're going to do a technical help guide for the 49cc Mini Quad. During the course of this video there is a chance of fuel spillages and we will be working with fuel so make sure you carry out any work in a well ventilated area away from naked flames or sources of ignition. We're going to remove the carburetor from the bike to clean it. So the first thing we need to do is remove the air filter. To do this we need to remove the two Phillips screws holding the air filter onto the carburettor. If you have one of the older quads with no weather filter it removes in exactly the same way. We are now going to disconnect the fuel pipe from the carburettor. There is a chance of fuel spillages at this point. Squeeze the clip and slide it up the pipe and then remove the fuel pipe from the carburettor. This will be tight to get off. Once we've removed the fuel pipe, we are then ready to remove the throttle cable from the carb. This unscrews anti-clockwise. It is spring-loaded, so once you get it to a certain point, it will just pop upwards. Carefully remove the slide out of the carburetor and the needle, and remove away from the carb. Using a 4mm Allen key, undo the two bolts holding the carburettor on. These will be tight as it needs to be an airtight seal. Loosen off both sides first to avoid damage to the carburettor and then fully undo the bolts and remove them from the car. Carefully remove the carburettor from the V-block. It will be tight on there, trying not to damage the gasket on the back of it. We then have to manoeuvre the carburettor through to remove it from the quad. As you can see here, we have the 49cc standard petrol mini quad carburettor. On the front here, you have a choke lever on it. When the choke is up like that, it means the choke is closed for starting the quad. When it is pushed down, when the quad has warmed up, that is the open off position. On the side of the carburetor you have your fuel tap. When the carb is normally mounted vertically on the carburetor, the off position as it is in now is horizontal and vertical is on. On the opposite side you have the screw with a spring on it which is your tick over screw. This alters the idle on the carburetor. Using a flat headed screwdriver you can adjust your tick over. By turning it clockwise it increases the tick over rev. So if your quad cuts out regularly when you are going in without the throttle on, it means that you need to increase your tick over. A very small adjustment makes a big adjustment to the tick over revs. Anti-clockwise decreases the tick over revs. So if your quad is trying to run away from you when you start it, decrease the tick over slightly. The fuel pipe on the side of it is a fuel overflow pipe. This means that if you have fuel coming out of this pipe, it means that your float is sticking or there is dirt or debris in your carburetor and the carb is overfueling. The idea of the pipe is that it drips any excess fuel out underneath the quad into a safe position away from sources of ignition. We are now going to clean the float out on our carburettor. At the bottom here we have the drain screw which you can actually undo when it's on the carburettor to remove all fuel from the carb. Remove the two screws on the side which allows access to the float chamber. When you remove the bowl off the bottom, be careful there is a gasket on there that you do not damage it. The white bowl section is the actual float which moves up and down with the fuel to shut the fuel on and off. The section just here moves up and down with the float bowl which opens the needle within the carb to allow the fuel access. The centre section is the carburettor jet. This needs to be perfectly clean inside because it's only a needle hole. 
Using a flat blade screwdriver, undo the jet. It will be tight in the carburetor. Make sure the screwdriver is the correct size. Loosen the jet off and then fully remove it from the carburetor. The hole in the centre of this is literally a pinhole size. Any two stroke residue, dirt or debris will cause it to block which will cause your carburetor to overfuel and the quad to run incorrectly. To clean this out you will need a very small piece of wire to go down the centre or if you wipe it over fully and make sure there is no fuel or oil residue on it you can hold it to your lips and blow through it. Hold it up to the light so that you can see daylight through the middle of it. If you can see daylight, the jet is clean. We now need to look at the second section of the jet in the centre. Looking through to see whether you can see daylight through the middle of it all the way through. If you can't, we will need to remove this jet from the centre of the carburettor to allow us to clean this section as well. Using a 6mm spanner, remove the centre jet section carefully unscrewing it. Once we've removed it from the quad, we then need to clean it in the same way we clean the centre small section of the jet, using either an airline or once it's cleared of any fuel residue, blown through carefully to make sure you can see daylight through the middle. We are now ready to remove the final section of the carburettor, so we now need to remove the needle from the carb to make sure this is clear of any two-stroke residue as well. Turn it onto its side and tap the side of the carburettor till the pin comes out. This then allows you to remove the needle from the carburettor. Again, make sure this is clean of any dirt, debris or two-stroke residue. Also, check the centre section of the carburettor for where that needle has been removed from to make sure again there is no dirt or two-stroke residue in there. One way to clean the carburettor if it is dirty inside is actually to put it in a tub of petrol. Obviously make sure that you use the appropriate safety gear if doing so. Once you're happy your carburettor is clean, we can then start to reassemble it. The first thing to do is to slide the needle into the mounting plate and then replace it into the carburettor. We now need to replace the pin that holds in position. This can be quite tricky to line up because it is very small. Once we have put this in, we then make sure that the needle moves up and down freely within the carburetor. We now replace the main section of the jet back into the carburettor, screwing it in clockwise and then tightening carefully with a 6mm spanner. Make sure you don't over tighten this as you could strip the threads in the aluminium carburettor. Replace the centre section of the jet and tighten up with your screwdriver. We're now ready to replace the float bowl of the carburettor. As you can see, there's two sides to it. One is totally flat, and the other has a small lip on it. The side with the small lip wants to be pointing towards the main body of the carburettor. Before you fit it, give it one final wipe over to make sure it's clear of any bits of dirt or debris. We will then replace the gasket onto the carburettor once the float is in position. It can only fit on in one position and one way round. Then take your float bowl, again align it up on there, making sure that the gasket is sitting correctly using the two screws you removed earlier. Tighten them up. Firstly put them in loosely and then tighten both sides equally once both screws are in position. Wow. 
We now need to replace the drain screw into the bottom of the carburetor. We have now fully cleaned and serviced our carburetor and it is ready to put back onto our bike. The first thing we're going to do to reattach the carburetor is to slide the slide into the carburetor. You will see on the slide there's a small notch on it which needs to line up with the tick over screw side of the carburetor. This can be quite tricky to get into due to the size of the vehicle we're working on. Once it's fully pushed down to the bottom, retighten the top of the carburetor. Once we have done this, we're going to check to make sure that the slide is moving up and down freely within the carburetor so that the throttle does not stick. Once you're happy with this, you can then reattach the carburetor to the bike. Check the position of your gasket and make sure the gasket is not damaged. If it is, it will need replacing. Align the carburetor into the correct position and using the two screws you removed earlier, slide them back through the holes and then tighten up the carburetor. Only loosely fit both sides at first and then equally tighten them on both sides, doing a quarter or half a turn on each bolt once they start to become tight. This will avoid damage to the carburetor, either bowing the plating or cracking it. We can now reattach our fuel pipe onto it. When we do push it back onto the carburetor, make sure there's no kinks or crimps in the fuel pipe and it's running smoothly, as this will distract fuel flow. Low the clip down to make sure it's in the correct position and holding the fuel pipe firmly onto the bike. We're now going to reattach our air filter onto the quad. Aligning it in the correct position, and using a Phillips screwdriver to tighten it up. These do only fit on one way up, so if you can't get it to align, turn the filter the opposite way up. Then tighten the filter fully up once you have got both sides located. The last job we have to do now is to tighten the top of the throttle unit using a spanner to make sure it is nice and tight. If that is loose, it will allow the carburetor to suck more air into the carb, which would affect the performance of the carburetor and the engine. Links for all the parts mentioned in the video are listed in the description below or are available at funbikes.co.uk. Many thanks for watching and let the fun begin.